Hello, I'm JJ Bull. I'm an analyst for TIFO Football. And in this video, we're going to look at Jack Grealish, old Jackie boy, and where he would fit into Manchester City if he signs for them. For all the coins in England, Manchester City are rumoured to want to buy him. In fact, we know they do. And uh, Aston Villa don't want to sell. But if they did, what would old Jackie boy bring to Manchester City? Where would he play? Where does he fit in to Pep Guardiola's tactical system? What's, what's he going to do? Why do they want him? Um, but if you wanted to find out more in a written platform in which you could read, I do, uh, you can go to theathletic.com forward slash TIFO IRL and there's heaps of cool stuff on Jack Grealish, not just him, lots of other football things there. Um, yeah, so we go there, there's a deal on and I think it's around about now, it's maybe a 30 day free trial so you can try it out. If you don't like it, get it out of there! But if you do, it's just stay in because um, it's great, it's where I learn all of my football from. Uh, not all. But most. <laughs> anyway, that's a really good couple of articles in Grealish. Way back, Michael Cox spoke to him and uh, Grealish revealed that he considers himself more of an 8 than a 10. But he really plays on the left as what I might call an 11. So, what will I do for Man City? Let's find out now! Man City, play, they tend to play a 4-3-3. It's the kind of Barcelona thing. And we know that what then that tends to look like is Stones, Diaz and Walker goes a three. Rodri makes it a bit of a, a diamond in the middle. I'll draw the diamond because I like drawing diamonds. Here's the diamond. You see it there? That's the diamond. Sinchenko might move in here into midfield, joined by Gundogan. So you've got a three, three. Then De Bruyne, Jesus, Sterling, Namares. Maybe one of these will join in. Basically, the numbers and the positions don't really matter. It's very fluid and there's lots of positions that need to be kept. Now, what they do when they go forward is keep width. So Sterling might be wide, maybe Mahrez will be wide. You'll have a central striker here. Then you might have this kind of shape building. Uh, and this sort of shape is what you might call, it's like the WM, it's the old WM thing. And it looks a bit like this. I'll show you the, how it works. Here's like a W or an M. Doesn't really matter which way round it is. But you have width from the two wide players. Then you have these kind of uh, free eights they've been called before, floating in behind De Bruyne. Gundogan does it sometimes, get rid of Gundogan. You can put in Bernardo Silva and come in here. And then if you have Walker overlap, sometimes Maras moves inside here. They might move a bit deeper like this. The, the, yeah, the, the team shape changes all of the time, but that's what they have. Width, they pass a lot. They create lots of chances. They win many games, that's what they do. Now, were Grealish to join Man City, he would fit in in a number of positions. One of the things that makes him so suited to the way Guardiola has his team play is that he can play that as an eight, so he can play for, let's take De Bruyne out, put Grealish in here. In fact, let's get rid of Silva and put De Bruyne in over here, because we know De Bruyne is great from these sorts of positions where he can play this exact kind of ball. Can it, let me do it. Come on, yeah, love it. So that's the kind of thing that um, he can do. Get De Bruyne in those positions by playing him on the right hand side of these two free eights and have manners here, whoever it looks. Now, Grealish can play here as one of the free eights where he can move into these positions, but he's actually very good and tends to play off of the left for Aston Villa. So he'll play mostly where Sterling is, out here. Now we'll take Sterling out and we'll stick in Gundogan. There he goes. Now a lot of Grealish's best plays you'll see from the previous season for Aston Villa are him winning or receiving the ball around about here, driving with it, Winning a free kick, he's the most fouled player in the league by miles. Um, a lot of that is down to him being very clever and drawing the foul. He'll throw his body in front of people. He'll often receive the ball, side on, know the collision's gonna come in and just wait for the, it doesn't have to be a slight touch or a big touch. He just waits for the defender to get close and he goes down, free kick, there you go. And that's actually relevant to Man City. They scored, of all the goals he scored last season, I think 13 were set pieces, around about that number. So obviously it's a big part of, um, how they're going to win games, set pieces win games, that's a thing. So winning that is useful, gets you out of pressure situations as well. Say they're up against a really difficult team in the Champions League, it's the most difficult teams they'll play against to be there. And you need to just relieve pressure for a little bit, get the ball to Grealish, she'll win you a free kick, you can slow it down and go from there. That's very useful. Now in terms of positioning, he'll be this sort of position here. If he's not going to go down and win a foul, he drives all of the time into these areas, into the box here and sets up goals with a little chip pass from like, like here. Does it a lot for Aston Villa. Makes a sort of dribbles where he'll get into these sorts of, let's do a little S bend. Yeah, there we go. That's sort of what Grealish does. He dribbles through players. He'll dribble through the middle of them. Let's give him players to run through. He makes things happen. 
Uh, and this is very useful for Manchester City because last season in the Premier League, um, Grealish, I'm going to look at some numbers here. So chances created in open play. Bruno Fernandes created the most chances in open play of any player in the Premier League last season. And that number was 77. Grealish was behind him with 70 chances created in open play last season in the Premier League. Now that is from far fewer games. Fernandes played a lot more games than Grealish for um, what I would say is a better team. Grealish is playing for Aston Villa. I think he played 26 games in total for Villa, mostly on the left, sometimes as a 10, which you can also do in this position here, but mostly from the left. Now, if we change that to chances created per 90, all of a sudden, Grealish goes up to being the most creative player in the league. So he's then just the most creative. Yeah, that's what I just said. The players below him, uh, Hudson Odoi, weirdly come up as per 90, quite creative. De Bruyne and then Bruno Fernandes. So De Bruyne, one of the most creative players in the entire league from set pieces and uh, open play. Grealish is going to give uh, a Manchester City extra creativity by I mean, actually making chances for players to score. So Man City dominate games, they control possession, sometimes they can't break teams down. Having a player like Grealish who actually makes things happen is all the difference. Bernardo Silva, his numbers are nowhere near as good as, uh, as, as Grealish. Great player, can control the play well, um, rarely gives it away, can go past the man, gives you control of the game. Grealish can do similar, but he also then contributes with terms of goals and assists. Um, I think it's, I admit, this number might be wrong, but I think he has 10 assists last season um, for Aston Villa. Again, not as good a team as Manchester City. If you've got players like Riyad Mahrez running off the back, you can cross to, you've got Bernardo Silva coming in, De Bruyne, Gabriel Jesus, whoever they sign up front as a striker, perhaps, um, there's going to be lots more that he can produce for them. In terms of defensive work, a lot of Man City's, a lot of things they do very well are off the ball and how they defend. Um, Grealish is never really high in the top percentiles or anything like that for like, pressures or interceptions or tackles, but he'll do a lot of work in the same way that Mahrez does a lot of work for Manchester City and you don't think of him as being a very team-focused player. He seems like a very individualistic player. Grealish seems individualistic because he's such a standout player, but he does a lot of work, a lot of tracking back and he'll have to within that system. The other reason I think this could be a really very wise signing for Manchester City if he were to move, other than positional flexibility, the fact he actually creates numbers of chances and they get turned into assists. Not that he just creates chances that are, I mean, however the chances are measured by various statistics providers is, you know, he doesn't have to be able to know that, but he actually creates assists, that's really important. The other thing is that he is a leader, he's a captain. So straight away, you put a captain into a team and you give them something extra, that kind of mental uh, fortitude, the, the little bit extra that you need to win big, prizes. Man City can walk their way through, not walk, but you know, it's tough in the Premier League, but they can win and beat most around them. But the Champions League is the one they just can't quite get over. Put more captains in your team, straight away you're going to have a better team. That's what lots of players do. I mean, Gundogan is kind of a leader. Um, Diaz is absolutely a leader. De Bruyne is essentially a captain already. Um, you put him in the pitch, he's got that there. But then you've got Jack Grealish as another leader, technical leader, I want to call him. Having uh, one of the best players in the league for one of your rivals, well, the last Villa and direct rival, is going to make your team better. It's going to bring some sort of uh, determination to win. It's going to bring you drive. It's going to bring a great talent on the ball, chance creation. It's going to score goals, can go past the player to suddenly change a slow passing move into a dangerous attack within uh, seconds. And he'd be a great signing for them. Although quite an expensive one if they can pull it off. And that is about Jack Grealish, who, like I said, in The Athletic, revealed that he likes to think of himself as an 8 rather than a 10 or an 11. An 8 is one of these guys here, a 10 is this guy in behind the striker, and 11 is kind of this winger, which is where I think he'd mostly play for Man City, but will perhaps often be in this midfield slot here with uh, someone else on the pitch. I'm not taking on Sterling. There we go. So that's that. And then for more like this, yeah, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'd love that. Do it now. And now you've subscribed, you've got TIFO IRL in your veins and you can come and see all the other videos we do throughout the season in the Premier League. Uh, loads of stuff like this. And um, yes, so that's good. Thanks for doing that and we'll see you next time. Have a lovely time. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. 
There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.